Beloved architect of our time. All my buildings don't add up to his three or four buildings. Three or four masterpieces more important than 50, 60 buildings. Lou was a breath of fresh air. My first works came out of my reverence for him. I didn't know my father very well. He never married my mother, and he never lived with us. I needed to find out who he really was. So I set out on a journey to see his buildings and to find whatever was left of him out there. Hi, this is Nathaniel Kahn calling. Don't think that he was always trying to be a prince. He did not understand it. Isn't it just two strong egos? It's pure ignorance on Lou's part. Did you ever drink with Lou? <laughs> yeah, you should ask my first wife. Did anybody know that Lou had three families all at once? No. That was part of his mystery. No camera, please. It was never rebuilt. It was just left this way. Yes. I'm the architect's son. He was oh. my father. Is he alive? No, he's been dead for uh, 25 years. He has a very romantic idea of what home was, and he could never build it for himself. How accidental our existences are. How full of influence by circumstance. He had an enormous amount of love. To love everybody, he sometimes did not see the closest ones. He cared in a very different manner, and he paid. He paid his life for this. He never saw it finished. He did. No, he never saw this. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. I mean, yeah, it was uh, in the midst of the uh, lockdown, I think, with the, uh, wasn't it? It might have been after Yeah, it. yes, with the hunt for Planet B, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, say, thanks for being flexible this this morning. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, Bill, I, I have to say I was so grateful for the chance last night. We we uh, we watched my architect. My my girlfriend hadn't seen it before, and um, I had you know logged into the Criterion Channel for the express purpose of watching. Are they playing the new pr uh, restored? Yes. Version? At Film Forum, yes, yes, and elsewhere. Well, I know that's going to be at Film Forum, but uh, yeah. we're going to get to that for sure. But I, I know it's going on right now, so I'm going to get this promote, promoting promoting it better late than ever. But I, I was I was actually just wondering um, if if the, the if the print that the Criterion Channel is streaming was that same restored version. It is okay. Yep, Would, absolutely. Oh, hopefully, you could see that. That it it looked it, it looked it looked bright and vibrant. <laughs> it, it's a beautiful. It looks beautiful, but but uh, you know, just just double. I it's mean, hard, I, it's hard to tell. In that, I thought it looked beautiful before. So, you thank know. you. <laughs> and yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, well, so yeah, so and it's at the film forum as we speak right now. I know you had a uh, Q and A the other night with Paul Goldberger. Yeah. Yes. How'd that did. go? Yeah. It was terrific. It was wonderful. You know the the. Um, uh, Paul wrote the obituary for my father when he was oh. very young. So yeah, Paul was, uh, you know, nowadays they, they well then too, they they pre-wrote obituaries for, yes. for prominent people. Um, right. but, um, sort of appropriately for my father and his, the, the many aspects of his life, they hadn't done one for him. So when the news came in, because it was a, you know, it was a death that was, well, I mean, no death is planned, right? But anyway, you know, he dropped most, it. Most aren't. Most aren't. In, I don't know in, if you've right. seen Andy Moner's new doc, latest documentary. I, I haven't. No, no. But I guess that, that's 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 true under certain circumstances. Also about a father, you know. And understandably. Um, yeah. 
but uh, so when he dropped dead in, in Penn Station, um, you know, he was not properly identified for several days. And then when the identification was made, the New York Times called Paul and he right. had just left the office and said, <clears throat> you know, it has to go out over over the wire tomorrow morning. So write the obit. So he was a young reporter in his 20s. Um, uh, and he went back in and wrote the obituary sort of, you know, and that was the days of not of word processing, but typewriters. So he typed it out. And that was the that was the way that I found out the next morning as a little boy of 11. My mother and I heard that he was we got call that he was dead, but didn't know any details. Went to the newsstand the next morning, bought several papers, the New York Times, the Philadelphia Inquirer, and took them home and read Paul Goldberg's obituary. And so that he had written for my for my dad. And I begin the film with his obituary. So there was a it was sort of coming full circle to have him there right. with me sitting there and and yeah. having not seen the film he hadn't seen the film in in, in 20 years so oh, he was watching with you in real time he, he watched yeah yeah and it, so was, was, it was a wonderful it? experience yeah it was great it was just it, it's one of the things about you know a film like this it changes as you as you watch it because you change <laughs> and yeah. and the world changes so that's been really the most the most interesting thing in bringing it back is seeing how uh, reactions change, how my own feelings change, how audiences perceive it now, um, and feeling that it's a film that can have a life, continue to have a life, is the most is the most thrilling thing of all for me. Because you know, as a filmmaker, as an artist of any kind, you hope that you connect with people. That's why part of the reason one one does it. So to know that one is still connecting with something that is from a number of years back is, is means a lot. Well, this, all those, you know, themes and the, um, the ideas behind the doc, they're all, I mean, they're all still very relevant. People still, still yeah. have complicated with um, uh, relationships with parents, it turns out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, been, it's been going on for, for a number of years now. That, uh, one thing, <laughs> yeah, one thing, I guess one thing having uh, watching it now with some distance uh, between Last time I saw it was may not have been when it first came out, but it was a substantial amount of time ago. What, uh, is how much you know the culture has changed in terms of just you know men's having a certain there's certain like you know level of these sort of you know the gods of architecture and of whatever you know uh, a certain level of uh, and and the amount of power they had and you know where they could. I don't mean get away with like they were trying to, or like your dad was trying to um, play the system in the sense that he knew he could get away with having three, for instance, three families, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, given who he was at the time, people under, us, us, us more or less understood or were not surprised anyway, like that this could happen, unless I'm mistaken. Whereas I don't think today, like that, the perception of somebody doing that would be very different. Does I'm that make sure. sense? Sure. No, I think it. I think it would be different, but I don't think. I don't think um, people people didn't approve of it then either. Yeah. No. I mean, so, I some, mean of his, <laughs> some of his colleagues were pretty uh, blatant. I, I think. Well, though, I think. I, I think. I think the thing. Yeah. Uh, where. Well, there is, I mean, there's a generational, obviously there are generational changes and, and much of that is, is for the better um, in that, you know, uh, you know, bad behavior is held to account, you know, as it should be. Sure. But, but I think that there are um, also subtleties in the case of, you know, in the case of my architect, the story that's in, that's contained within it, it challenges you to, to engage with ambiguities. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not, it's not, it does not present um, him or his world or, or the choices that he made as being, it's not a moralistic vision of that. Mm -hmm. It is trying to look at it with clarity and with emotion, with compassion, um, but also with, um, I wouldn't say judgment, but with, but with a searingly, uh, um, you know, laser focused eye on what happened. So I, you know, as a, I think certainly the people who suffered greatly from 
the experience were his children. And the three of us, um, it's marked all of our lives. Right. So, uh, which is not to say that the, 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 that the women in his life didn't also suffer. But I think that once again, the ambiguities of these things in this particular case, I am not, I, I, I can't speak for, for, uh, for the world. I can only speak for the case that, that I had experience with, you know. Um, so, it, you know, in that case, I think that the, the film is asking you to engage with the ambiguities of these things. And um, that he was a person who people loved and who loved him and his, the price that he exacted, as my mother says in the film, you know, she paid a high price for being involved with him, for being able to work on the project she worked on. And I asked her, you know, it seems like a, a terrible price to pay. And she said, you know, it was, but, but it was worth it. Right. I don't, that's her voice. I'm not, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm saying that the film, you know, the film yeah. puts these things out for you to engage with. And yeah, I think I mean, one, I mean, this is, this, is part of, this is part of what was really interesting about sort of showing the film again. One, one showing that we had in particular that I, at Film Forum that was really very moving was with a number of students, young people um, from Parsons. And these are people studying architecture. And afterwards, one of the questions that came up several times, formulated in different ways, was, "How? What is a hero today? How, you know, who can we who can we look up to today?" And the the, the there were the students were really trying to engage with that ambiguity in the sense that we don't approve of what this man did. You know how he lived his life. Nevertheless, we love the work. How do we square those things? And my answer is that. You know, I mean, there isn't the, the there isn't an answer. The answer is the, these are the realities. So, in looking at those at those things, in a way, there's there was there was this kind of safe space within the wonderful environment that is Film Forum, and it truly is a forum. You know, it's a place for conversation. There was a place to talk about these questions of what is a hero today. Um, you know, do, do we have heroes anymore? You know, so these it, it was it was really really. Uh, wonderful to think that the film was bringing up those kinds of very complex questions. Um, and there are no easy answers. Human beings are wildly complex. Well, you know, you made the film, you are as subjective a person as, but other than your sisters, your half sisters, uh, your dad had three different significant relationships, all of which bared one child, right? Three. Right. That's right. One one marriage and, and two children outside of it. You have to see the film to get the whole story. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And, um, and, and all and and with women uh, that he was working with. Yes, right. So he is yeah, it all makes sense on some level though, you know. Um, it, it's 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 hardly like these arbitrary relationships, you know, that he was well, yeah, and whether or not it makes sense, happened. it happened. It happened. <laughs> that's right. the, and, but what what I was getting to know. And your sis, either of your sisters made, it probably would have made a very different film. But yeah. this one is amazingly objective in the sense that it doesn't judge your father. There right. are people in the film that do. Absolutely. But the film, it, the, the, the POV doesn't. And considering it's yours, right. that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But what I also wanted to point out, what I saw at the time, and I don't know the, you know, um, Nathaniel Kahn from 1990 or whenever. What year did you shoot it? It was 20 finished years in 2003. Ago. Yeah, 2003. So it yeah. feels older. I don't know. It does it does well? The film took yeah. five years to make, so there is material from earlier than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good sure. Point. Yeah. And what I'm seeing there in that film is a man who's. It's really interesting to rewatch it, knowing you a little bit. In that, that I saw somebody who maybe was. Maybe because it was contextual to the subject matter, but you seemed uh, sort of, I don't know what's the right word for it, str struggling with a certain level of confidence, not in your filmmaking, but personal, emotional. Absolutely. That's very perceptive of you. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. In your body language, you know, it was so visceral it was, this time. 
Ex explain that to me. So, so you're looking at you're looking at me. I mean, this is this is one of the sort of amazing things about being, or, or extraordinary things, and and unsettling things about being yeah. a filmmaker. You know, and being in one's own film and looking sure. at it later, is right. that you know we're not terribly aware of change taking place. And people will remind you that, oh, you didn't oh. used to be that way or something. Right, right, right. But, but and now, of course, we, we, record, we record ourselves and each other much, much more than we used to. Nevertheless, you know, to sort of put it in a context like a film, which is a full container, it's a full thing. And to sort of have it be a time capsule and then revisit it 20 years later, it's, it's an uncanny feeling. It's disturbing to some degree. It's also sort of, I mean, it's disturbing because you're looking at a different vision of yourself. So you're pointing out you you perceived something about me then that that you're talking about now and do you see a difference in me now or or are you sort yeah. of just observing them and, and thinking well i know no yeah for a big difference i mean well it's also just maturity of course right sure yes it, it's also just someone who's like a little still somewhat awkward maybe yes but again i don't know what you were like outside of the frame right well, that's a, that's a key point, and I think I think that one of one of the things is that there is an awkwardness at you know at any age, but certainly you know I mean I was in my late thirties when I was making that film, right? So so not a kid, not a kid. Not a kid. Right. Um, asking the kinds of questions of like, tell me about my father, or sort of tell me about my daddy. Yeah, sort of, of course. You know, we're we're very we're, we we sort of think, ah, oh, God, the kid should get over it, you know. And there were people who definitely treated me that way. Mm -hmm. Then there were one, the ones who didn't because they were more interested in talking about themselves or whatever it was, or, or they genuinely wanted to sort of, they kind of accepted it and wanted to help me. One thing that I found though, that when I went to India, it was treated as completely natural that at this point in my life, I would be asking the questions of tell me about my father. And that was something that, uh, that entire trip remains with me as a touchstone in my life right, because of the generosity of the people, I, the individuals I encountered, not just the ones in the film, just in general, that I felt all of that awkwardness was gone, that I felt many times in the United well, States. Yeah, you're many right. right. I mean, I cannot, you, I, I will assume that these, uh, Interviews, or meetings, maybe were you know, not scripted. Certainly, no, and, certainly not. <laughs> and, <laughs> right, and for the most part, probably like you were hearing these reactions in real time at the yep, moment. That's right. And that's it wasn't right. Like you repeat, you discuss things first, and then had the no, did not, people. did not. No, no, I, I, I assure that, that you're correct. always, you're always then off kilter. You're always, o always, and 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 I and I court, I court that in in my filmmaking. The worst thing is to do a pre-interview. The worst thing is to know what you're going to talk about and to say, oh, let, let's let's talk about this, let's talk about that. I know they do that on talk shows and stuff like that. You can tell, I, yeah. you know, immediately you can tell, oh, they told that story backstage and oh, yeah, tell that one, that's a good one. To me, that's completely dead. And it's why I, right. I don't go for that kind of programming. I just find it, it's canned, you know. But a, a, a great documentary film, and, and there are so many of them and there's so many amazing filmmakers doing work now, um, who are really hanging it out there and, and find, getting remarkable access. At, you know, I mean, that's kind of the history of the whole thing. But, but to me, the going into a conversation without having met the person and truly not knowing what's going to happen, that's the fun. That's the tightrope of, of this kind of filmmaking that yeah, makes the whole right. thing worth it. And actually, okay. last night, I did a Q&A with Bob Richmond, who was the cinematographer oh. that I've worked with on a number of films. Yeah. And Bob I was going to ask maybe if Sabine was coming. To the what, what's that? I was going to ask if Sabine had made Yeah, it. no, no. So it, it, I mean, the, the, the triumvirate there is, you know, I mean, it's, okay. it's you got to you got to film it and you got to edit it, <laughs> you know. So, so um, and there, you know, this film is the producing team as well. There are many people behind making up. They're not many people, but the people who are behind this film are all key. But to talk with Bob, um, that's the scariest part for me because you, as you say, you can't redo it. When you're in the editing room, you can try it a different way and you move it around it um, in a way that's scary too. But the, but the very front end of it, when you go to film it, 
um, it is truly scary. And when you notice, exciting scary. But when I go with Bob on, on, a, on a project like this, that, you know, there were so many moments in that film that if the camera person had, had not had the true understanding of what we're looking for, they would have missed it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, as an example, the scene um, when the man on the boat, uh, he, the, the only person in the film, and one of the biggest problems of a film like this is you tell people that you're coming, they know who you are, they wanna say nice things or they figure out what they wanna say. But the man on the boat was the only, Robert Boudreau was the only person who built a boat for the context, mm -hmm. built a boat that my father designed um, that I didn't even know existed. We found it, the producer found it. We, yeah. I, I said, oh my God, really a boat? And so we managed to go to the boat without the man who was the captain. It's a concert barge. It opens up and plays concerts. Um, yeah, it has a whole orchestra associated with it. The guy who was the captain and the orchestra, orchestra conductor did not know that I was that I was coming. Knew I was coming, but he thought I was some kind of reporter. So I was yeah, able to go through the whole time. And he acted like a total jerk. I mean, he didn't want to talk to me. He wasn't interested. You know, he's busy getting ready for his concert. And then, and it's sort of but one he of the also, he was the captain, but he was also the conductor. Is that correct? Right? Yes, he's the captain he's and the conductor. The he, he built yeah. the boat, so he, yeah. he had gotten my father to build the boat for him in 1976. It was finished after my dad's death, but so this guy is, you know, really kind of kind of blowing me off a little bit. You know, I got a concert to do, kid. Yeah, you know, right. I can't talk to you. And finally, I say to him, and this, we, you know, you have to wait for the right moment. You can't do it too fast. It's the timing is everything. And I was waiting for this moment because he's the only person in the whole film who didn't know that I was the son of the guy who we were talking about. So I say to him, well, you know why I came today? And he's like, well, no, not really. And I said, well, you know, I'm making a film about Louis Kahn. He said, well, yeah, I knew that. And I said, but I'm his son. And the guy just dissolves, you know, um, in this like, room. Like, so in the moment. Um, so in the moment. He, process, he hear, hears you yeah. say it, processes it so yeah. quickly. It's as if he already knew it on some subconscious level. That's right. I totally agree. And it turns out he had been, and he says, well, I remember you. He has the age wrong. He says, but six years old, I wasn't, I was 11, but I saw you at your father's funeral and right. you were there with your mother. And of course I was off in the corner because I wasn't part of the funeral party. We were off, we were not, we were, you know, persona non grata, but yeah. we were there, but yeah. he saw me then and he dissolves. And there's this moment. And then he, then he kind of reaches across and he, and he hugs me. Yep. But Bob Richman, the cinematographer. Now imagine this scene from his point of view. He's, I'm in front of him. He's filming me sort of over the shoulder. And then he's filming this person who we're interviewing. And suddenly this thing, this, this enormous emotional thing happens. As a camera person, what the heck do you do, right? The answer is you do nothing. And that is where Bob Richman is, you know, a genius. And if some, if he'd zoomed in, if he'd panned to me, if he'd somehow made some move that, that, you know, that any move, any move with that camera would have ruined the moment, but he just sat on it. And sometimes that's the hardest thing to just be. So I wanted to have him there partly because I think it's interesting for people who don't kind of know how these um, films that, that are composed partially of scenes, so-called verite. I mean, I'm not even, I don't, uh, the word is sort of odd anyway, because it's not really direct and it's not really, you know, I mean, everything that happens in a camera, there's something, there's, there's an artifice involved with it. Right. Right. It's not like being a fly on the wall. As Bob says, if we're a fly, we're a really big fly, <laughs> you know, big ugly fly. But nevertheless, a moment like that with a lesser camera person or a camera person, not even lesser, a camera person whose sensitivities are not for the humanity of the moment. Yeah, right. Maybe they might have moved. A technically minded or, right. Exactly. Right, right. right. Exactly. Uh, and we should mention though that uh, Robert, the, the, the captain, the conductor, um, hugs, hug, is very emotional. Um, yes. As is, which we'll get to in a moment, I was gonna say as is most of the people that knew your dad on projects were, yes. or the ones he interviewed. And, he hugs you, takes a breath, and then it just says, 
Okay, we'll have uh, enjoy the show. <laughs> have a nice concert. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Next. It was, yeah. A, it was interesting, almost comical, but yeah. it was just uh, this very powerful moment in the, of, of, of several in the film. And, but I did want to, it's a nice way to segue because your daddy, uh, your dad was rather uh, somewhat enigmatic, obviously. Yeah. Yet, you know, through the footage we see of your dad, and there is footage, of course, and, uh, but we don't really get to know a lot about him through that footage. What we get, where we do get is your testimonials, your experiences and the people he worked with. So, and it's amazing how, you know, given what feels like an opaque guy, and I could be completely wrong, of mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. but that, that once somebody talks about him, they have strong, strong feelings and, and strong. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and really, and I mean, when you say opaque, it's so interesting because people who knew him felt enormous warmth, warmth. enormous connection. Right. Well, clearly that was there, yes. I mean, I think he was a little like a comet who came, you know, screaming into your orbit yeah. and disappeared, you know, yeah. But, yeah. but he's a person who changed the room, you know, and, and made you feel like you were special. I mean, every, everyone is special, of course. And, and he was a person who respected that. He was not a remote person or a kind of, or an arrogant person. I mean, there was arrogance to him, but he was not a person who, he, he was interested in the other person, genuinely interested in the person he was with. And I think that, that people who worked with him, you know, felt that. And there is an enormous generosity in that. So once again, we're back to these ambiguities. A person who is so generous, yeah. And so warm in the moment is also able to be so cold on a certain level. So, so, so tough, so self-involved, so, so concerned right. about the work that he's doing that the human cost while understood. And this is the, this is the point. This is not a person who like just didn't care or didn't notice, not at all. And that's, that's why I sort of resist the idea of, of opaque because he was oh, very yeah. connected but there was a kind of a steely insistence that work in the end is the only thing that you can count on. And I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I guess the other one I was, believe, with, you know, the limited footage that we see in the film of him, is someone who's inside their head, I get, you know, maybe a cake wasn't. That's a was, great, that's a great point, but I want to be specific about that. And that that's about Sabina because, you know, as we work together, Sabina and I, and we had, you know, several troves of footage. And obviously, one of the problems with today is that there's so much footage, uh, and and it's it's kind of soulless because it's just we're just blanketing everything with, you know, everything's the iPhone, whether it's your meal or it's somebody's funeral or it's a wedding. It's all sort of the same, and it's all on your iPhone. And you might lose it one day and think, oh my God, I've lost my, you know, my life memories. But the reality is, we're all recording way too much crap. Right. Well, yeah. So you know, so so you know, when I say we had troves of material, we had a bit, but not that much. But we did have interviews with him, and we had encounters with him, and we had you know quite a bit. But we didn't choose those things. We chose the things where they're exactly like what you're saying. I wanted to try to find the moments when he wasn't thinking about what he was saying, or when he wasn't you know, sort of performing himself, if you will, where he was just kind of being himself and kind of caught unawares by the camera because cameras are good at that. Mm -hmm. um, so those moments where you say he's kind of interior, you're absolutely right. Those mm -hmm. are, but those are the ones we chose because Got they it. seemed like the ones that would present him as a person as opposed to him as someone kind of performing himself or putting himself forward. It was more him unguarded that we wanted, and that, that's that's what I found most intriguing was how did he walk, how did he how did he move, how did he how did he you know there's a moment where he's kind of looking confusedly, not sure whether to go this way or that path or whatever it is, and that was such an emblematic moment. We slowed it down, we slow it down in the film a little bit. We use it, in fact, I think well we use it just once, but we slow it down, mm -hmm. and it's moments like that that I have enormous suddenly empathy for for the person and that I feel really connected to a part that I didn't get to see as a child. So anyway, we made those choices and Sabina was 
obviously was, you know, a genius at that. And, and she is as, as an editor, she understands those moments and picks them where a person is most revealed, most, most themselves, you could call it most vulnerable, but really it's just most themselves. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, well, right now, my architect is, is still at the film farm through, I guess, through Tuesday, is that, is that the? Through Thursday. The Thursday. Yeah. A few more days to see it, yeah. That's good, so yeah. I will get the word out again. again. Yes, and no, it's, it's so great to see big. I mean, we, we um, restored it. I worked with, uh, with a I group. I was gonna get to this part. Oh yeah, yeah go ahead, you, you asked no, me. No, 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 go. Do. No, no, it was restored by, I mean, the, the question is, you know, what does it mean to restore a film? And, and um, you can go as far as you want, you know, and I wanted to go as far as possible, just because, <laughs> because I, you know, it's a, it, 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 it's a, it, it felt like it deserved it. it. It was asking for me to go back and there was certain technology that we couldn't at the time, we made a beautiful 35 millimeter print at the time, but it was from multiple, you know, 2003, but from multiple sources. So the film is at that kind of made at that moment when technologies were changing a lot. So some of it was shot in 16. Some of it was, you know, of course, archival that had been transferred in various ways. And we went back to negative. Some of it was shot in beta SP, you know, standard definition beta cam. Some of it was shot in DV, you know, wow. DV cam. So to kind of meld all those things together, and make it seamless was was difficult at the time. Um, we did it pretty well, and then yeah. we did take you know a, a film thirty five millimeter output of the of the of the film, and then of course you put together with the beautiful score of Joseph Vitarelli, which is such a gorgeous gorgeous score. That was recording that was a real thrill to record it in Los Angeles. Um, but trying to put all those things together at the time, we did the best we could. But going back to it there are technologies now available that really allowed us to kind of pull those things apart again into the fields that are, you know, the, the, the video um, signal then was composed of fields. It wasn't, it wasn't a frame. It was, you know, happening twice, twice a frame and being able to stick those things together properly and go from the 30 frames a second of video to the 24 frames and do it really well. So there's no stuttering or jumping. There's new technology available, and I worked with a, a terrific, really wonderful artist in his own right, cinematographer Patrick Lindemeyer at a, a company called Andromeda. Sure. Um, in Switzerland, in Zurich. Okay. Where Sabina is from as well. Um, and he loved the film and just went the full distance of really going back to source materials, pulling things apart again. And we were able to, I think, now make it much more. It's more, we didn't change it. But we we um, made it smoother visually, so that things things sort of fit together a little a little more smoothly. Um, but not changing any of the edits. But when you encounter when you have DV next to next to sixteen millimeter next to next right. to you know Betacam, it now seems like one seamless one format. Thing yeah, and that so um, that that was a lot. And then the soundtrack too. So a lot was done. Can I well, well who approached whom? I mean, uh, I know it's being dis this new new restored uh, version yes. uh, is was is distributed by Abramarama and um, but who did yeah, had it? Uh... Oh yes, well I I know I know Richard Abramowitz from from uh, from doing the Price of Everything together. So he distributed that film. They, they distributed that film, and we didn't have that long a theatrical run with the film. Unfortunately, uh, we could have, but. Therein lies a tale, but uh, but but um, with my architect, I wanted to bring it back uh, theatrically and also do the Criterion um, component of do do both things. So I um, decided I would do that, <laughs> and the I, I, I approached it from, What's yeah. that? Oh, I'm saying the 20th anniversary is a great. Yes, 20th anniversary. So I approached mm -hmm. Richard. Richard. Richard loved the film and said, you know, we'll we'll do it. We'll take it out theatrically. So bringing a film back, especially especially a documentary film, which, you know, it's, it's very difficult to make a theatrical run in the, for the first time, it's hard enough to bring a film back. It's doubly hard, but I'm so gratified to see that people are going to see it in the theater and Film Forum has done well with it. And we're taking it around, Abramaram is now booking it around the country. So I hope that wherever people see this, this program, that when it comes to yeah. 
your, your city that you'll see it because it really is something that should be seen on a screen projected and with other people. That's the thing, you know, we think with big 60 inch monitors and, and bigger, you know, that somehow we're getting the best possible theatrical experience from these films. But, you know, uh, -uh. because so much of what the film is all about is being able to experience something in the dark with a bunch of people that you don't know, because there's a group, a group reaction, a group experience that really oh, yeah. makes you feel right. part of humanity, you know, and, and that there's, there's, there's a whole element there that happens. It's missing. I mean, it's like, you know, we have stereo and we have five track and we have, you know, 12 track now even right surround and, you know, all this stuff, all of which is great, but there's this other sense that engages when an audience is there that is like our, our deepest, I think, our deepest humanity, which is something that transcends all of the senses and yet also encompasses them all. And it's this sort of social sense of how is this impacting the community? How is this impacting each other? And that's the kind of thing that I'm, that I'm you know, that I go to the movies for and that I'm thrilled to see is happening when I sit in the room again, you know, with this film, with, with audiences, which I've, which I've done several times now at Film Forum. Well, I hope a lot of people do get a chance to see it. I, I'm not sure it's necessarily a Father's Day film, but you know. <laughs> it is, no, that's a good, that's a good point. Maybe it is, maybe no. it is. Yeah, no, but, you know, see with I your think dad. everyone, see everyone has a dad. complex, everyone yeah. has a complex relationship with, with their parent, whether or not they're, they grow up with them or they don't, you know? Well, exactly. And also, you know, family trauma is a generation, usually generational. There's a, a new documentary out there. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it or maybe you'll be aware of it, but it's called Sam Now. I um, haven't seen it. I'd like to. Yeah, you should see it. Uh, it's it's directed by a, a filmmaker, young filmmaker, Reed Harkness. And mm. uh, he's half brothers with this guy, Sam Harkness. And they, uh, I just had Reed on actually, because, you know, I love these types of conversations, of course, and you know I love the <laughs> documentaries that are about families and you know where emotion and you know that where this plays you know sort of in the forefront of the story and you know his his is another I, I I'll put it on your radar but it's, oh absolutely it's I see it. like a brand new it just just came out it's in theaters right now like, so, I'll go see it. It sounds yeah, it sounds yeah, wonderful. Yeah. It's really amazing. If you look at the trailer, you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, well, thank you for you know agreeing to do this. I mean, this has been a real treat to reconnect with you and and for the opportunity to watch my architect again all these years later. Um, it's, 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 it was a wonderful uh, experience. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, so until next time. <laughs> until next time. Thank, no, okay. conversations you're like this, it, it, it inspire me to work harder yeah. And, yeah. and make another good film. You know, it's, it's yeah. so hard, but it's so great to be able to really talk about what we do together. So thank you for doing what you do. It's, it's really, it's, it's a pleasure to be, to talk with you. Oh, I appreciate it. All right. Um, all right, well, I'll see you in Brooklyn or Yes. Well, wait, sure. Let's yeah. Let's and do that. If you're up in the Hudson Valley, let me know. Where Where are you? Where, where are you located? Um, I'm kind of like uh, I well, I work right now. I'm in in my at this radio station I work at in Red Hook, and it just turns out like it's a small independent station. So, oh, I could have come in. in. I could have come. We could have we could have sat across from each other <laughs> in Red Hook. You're in well, Red Hook. No, not the Brooklyn one. Not the, the Hudson Brooklyn. Valley one. That's in Valley. Uh, how far? How far away? Just down away the road from Bard. We're just down the road from Bard College. Oh, okay, sure, right. And I'm up in near Catskill. I mean, I I live nearby. I have a place, but I'm my now I'm like living in essentially a town called Athens, New York, which is mm -hmm. north of Catskill, so right on the river. And my life is, you know, but the thing about the Hudson Valley is, it's just you're, you know, you're always scooting around from like Woodstock to Rhinebeck to yeah because that's the social nature of, of living up here so it's like, it's it? like yeah. TV. i'm so intrigued by that so you so in terms of this like you go for dinner at somebody's place over in rhinebeck and then you'll go somewhere yeah spend an yeah. afternoon picking out somewhere, somewhere. Or, yeah you'll go to a show or 
And then, um, yeah, so, we, I mean, so it, like if for dinner, typically if you're like neighbors, friends, I mean, I, it's much more like going to friends. I love this because uh, uh, we're, we're, you know, you, you get dinner invitations now. Like, I, it's isn't, it, isn't it great? <laughs> yeah, it is nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a little, I'm still a little cautious, you know, but, but yeah. I mean, I don't like the big gatherings, but yeah, well, these I mean, are small. I like them. I miss them, but, you know, yeah. but smaller I ones. I had dinner on Saturday night with uh, the, the executive director of the Woodstock Film Festival, mm. doing some, doing some work with them, and that's a really nice festival. I like that festival a lot. Yeah. Um, do you go so, down to Jacob Burns? Do you go to the Jacob Burns Film Center ever? We're, I'm going to be there Sunday. Oh, at the Jacob Sorry. Burns. That's in Westchester. Yeah, it's it's not it's not really your neck of the woods, yeah. but I'm just wondering oh. if you ever go there. It's it's up. Not not since I've moved up here, but um, not, yeah, it's further it's further away for you. Yeah. It's not what town is that though? I think it's sort of near Malkisco, isn't it? So oh. maybe somewhere in there. Yeah. Not too far. You're showing it there? On Sunday. You're showing it there on Sunday. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's a great film center. It's a terrific place. Oh, well, I'd love do you have a do you have a cinema? Yeah, I'd love to love it if you there feel are a bunch. Like, yeah, no, there's, there's a bunch up here. There's a bunch. And we should have yeah, we should totally have a screening up here and um well, we, could, we could do a conversation together. I'd love to do a and a with you. Okay. If you feel like I mean, doing that, let me know. I mean, that'd be fun. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll do some, uh, some, you know, recon on it and see if we can't work it out. Uh, but, but you should do show it regardless. I mean, you know, if, I sh if it's shown in a theater and they want to do it, I won't. Make sure. If there's yeah. anybody up there, if you know, if there's a theater up there, we'd, we'd love to do it. There, I'd love, there love to there, do there, a Q&A with there's, you. And there's an organization called Upstate Films up here. And they have a couple mm -hmm. of cinemas, which and they're doing a lot of fun, independent film stuff. And uh, yeah. Great. No, it seems like a very vibrant, that's a very vibrant. How far, yeah, from, how far are you from like New Paltz and, and places? Um, like a, well, uh, at, for instance, Athens is probably about, it's a bit of a waste further north, uh, but not that far. I mean, you not know, far, right. probably like 45 minutes, 35 okay. minutes. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah, I'm closer to like Woodstock, Kingston, Rhinebeck area. No. Okay, sure. Yeah. Just look at a map for Pete's sake. I will. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, My geography. You know, but it's, north totally, of New York is bad. Yeah. I mean, I knew the area pretty well and I would come to the Woodstock Film Festival and I went to Bard sure. when I was younger. But now that I live up here, I'm just, I totally bought into it. I just, I really, I got burnt out. Things had kind of stifled. Um, I'll, I'm going to edit out this last portion. Yeah. Of this. No, sure. And then we can close. Well, you can stop recording too or whatever. Well, we can say goodbye. Sure, let's, let's do that. And then we'll keep talking a little bit. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, again, thanks again for, um, this was fantastic. And uh, I really appreciate your making the time, but also just being so uh, present and accessible that makes doing this a real joy. Thank you. All right. Great to be with you. Thank you. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah.